Hello once again, my dear High Existence family. I hope wherever you are in the world right now, it's a beautiful day for you and the ones you love. We've got a unique episode today. A few months ago, we ran the first ever Ascent program, a two-month exploration into digital creativity and online entrepreneurship. We had a big, bold group of 20 join us on this expedition of personal growth and building aligned income and personal projects. In this episode, John Brooks, Mike Slavin, and I take a look at what transpired, highlight some of the unique obstacles and opportunities that came up for people, and point to some of the tips and tricks that you can use right now to get started birthing your own beautiful creation. If you feel ready to significantly unlock and unblock yourself, to do some amazing work with a community of dreamers and believers like yourself, and just start living in a more aligned way, we are opening applications again for the second round. You can find the link in this podcast description or on the article on our website. If you have any questions, you can always feel free to send us a message directly. But we are at a critical time in the history of humanity. The world is waiting and ready for your gifts. And the levels of power, beauty, and excitement that living in alignment brings to you. If you're ready for the adventure of a lifetime, we are ready for you. So with that, let's jump right in. All right. Welcome, everyone. Back to another High Existence Dialogue. I'm Mike Slavin, joined by Eric Brown and John Brooks. Today, we're gathering to discuss a really amazing experience that we all just passed through together with an awesome group of people called The Ascent. We'll get into the nitty gritty of um, you know, what, what pertains to that and what went down. How are you guys doing today? Amazing. Amazing. I'm still riding high after just everyone shares the experiences that came through. Um, Really excited to explore it and really satisfied, really satisfied that this is something that has found its way into the high existence ecosystem now. Yeah, I, I echo Eric's sentiment there greatly. I think that when we created The Ascent, I always felt like this was the program that was kind of staring us in the face to create for many years, but for whatever reason, we didn't zone in on it. I mean, so much of what we do with with High Existence is talk about alternative ways to live, alternative ways to make a living, uh, following your bliss, following your passion. And we never really had a really structured online experience to help people do exactly that. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Absolutely. Yeah. And what we'll describe and and discuss a bit on this, on this podcast is some of these skills that, that people picked up and, um, these aren't always immediately obvious. Some of these things are kind of, you know, once you see them, you're like, wow, well, of course I could do that. But it didn't occur to me that I could do that until someone just laid it out in front of me and said, yeah, this is definitely possible. I mean, one just to give a, a small example, and we'll dive into a lot of stuff, I'm sure. But we live in a time where accessibility to anyone has gone up dramatically. You can, you can reach out. You can create relationships with the people that you admire. You can knock on their door digitally. You know, you don't have to tra- get on a train and, or ride horseback to travel and, or send letters that never get there or anything like that. The, the amount of relationships that you can build, uh, the opportunity that's there is massive. And a lot of people don't ever take advantage of it. And it's really one of those things that um, can open so many doors. You know, we can, we can engineer things and make plans. But when you have relationships, possibilities just jump out of the out of those kinds of relationships so we had one of the participants he made an awesome video and reached out to this guy that he really admired and the guy responded back and was just so moved by it and there's a there's a you know a connection forming there but it's just so great to see people actually seizing that opportunity um, because so much that you you can't even calculate the power of a single relationship um, that kind of stuff can just really change your life. So, um, 
yeah, I mean, we can get into specifics and all, all kinds of things, but I'm curious, what was there, uh, was there a moment or a particular uh, thing that happened during the experience that really stuck with you guys that you're really holding on to? Um, curious what, what you see as some of the, the shining gems from the ascent. I mean, it's so difficult to pinpoint any one specific thing because here we have a, a tribe of 20 individuals, a team of facilitators that is seven of us in total, I think, and many, many events each week. The amount of amazing experiences that can happen when you bring together people like 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 the facilitators and the participants um statistically there's just so many amazing kind of synchronicities and collisions of ideas one of the things i really liked though was seeing how the participants collaborated in in interesting ways outside of the actual program so we had lots of different containers where people could interact and learn and grow and hone their skills but as the bonds deepened, you would see calls spark up outside of the official containers and friendships being made and collaborations happening. Um, so, yeah, the, the coolest thing for me to see was that so many deep friendships were made, you know, and I was like, wow, I've actually helped to create this container that the year is inspiring people to follow their passions. But wow, like I sense a lot of actual love between people. Yeah. And it's like. To even have a small part of that, that was that was epic, epic to see. Yeah, the community stuff I think is actually worth an entire, an entire tangent at some point in this conversation because it's absolutely central. It's a theme that comes up on the retreats as well, right? That we can we can bake in as many experiences as we want, but really one of the most powerful things that people get from it is the community that comes together. One of the things that was both surprising and reassuring at the same time was how much this, the process for everyone actually became an internal process. You know, we had presented this and we still did uh, walk people through an arc, kind of like a blueprint of how to set things up, how to run through projects, how to ship things in the world. But we noticed over time, particularly as the weeks went on, just this increasing need to actually focus on some of the inner obstacles people had. Fear of failure, fear of putting themselves out there, fear of conversation, fear of public speaking. And it, uh, it was surprising how uniting that need was in people, but also reaffirming in that, wow, if we can get out of our own ways, like the world is your oyster. If you can just unlock yourself, and again, it's why community is so helpful in mirroring back the best of you. Um, but when you get out of your own way, you are quite literally unstoppable. And you know, for something like the ascent, that became extremely, extremely helpful. Absolutely, yeah. It it never ceases to you know, amaze me how you know what happens when you bring together a group of like-minded people. If, even if nothing else happened, just getting people in a room together who, you know, have their differences, of course, they're unique and, and have their own sort of sorts of gifts, but there's something drawing them together, this, this deeper desire to chart their own course, to not be beholden to what the world says they should do. Um, and, you know, like really commit themselves to exploring this life. Uh, it's, it's really, it's really amazing what can happen when that when that goes down. And I imagine there might be some people listening to this that really crave a sense of belonging, that really wish they had some, some people in their life that were able to resonate and sort of ride the wavelength of their interests. And I remember a time in my life where I didn't have that and it was hard. And, um, you know, for so if someone is listening, I mean, this is one of the most valuable things about the ascent, just the people that you get to meet and the friendships that you form that can be supportive long after the experience is over. You know, part of it is, and we may have talked about this the first time we were discussing the ascent when we were building it. Um, you get to when you're surrounded by people who are seeing your gifts and wanting to uplift you and elevate you into 
um, the version of yourself that you're striving to become, that really helps you transform your identity and transform your relationship to yourself rather than just be stuck in the, the circulating sort of patterns of how people see you in your day-to-day -day life. And, and so, yeah, it's just that it's sense of belonging. I mean, having people that you really deeply resonate with and you feel like you're on your own path, but there are shared qualities to the, the road that you're walking and to be able to walk that hand in hand and find the others, as Tim Leary said, I think it's, it's a beautiful thing to watch happen. Yeah, and so I'm not really into the super magical f frame of, you know, everything is divinely orchestrated and, you know, all of these magical things happen, like, and everything's meant to be. I think there's some truth to that. But I do think psychologically that there is something that is quite magical and miracle-like when you take bold action. You know, when you take that first step of, like, walking into something you might be a bit hesitant you might be a bit afraid but when you do that and you kind of like put yourself out there a little bit crazy things happen you know like everyone's got a story of that time that they did this thing and they put themselves out there they took this risk maybe they went traveling alone or they joined this program and then amazing things happened and that's where the story began kind of like you know when you read the hobbit it's like you have to leave the shire I'm kind of currently listening to The Hobbit. Love that that story. You kind of have to embark on that on that journey. You have to get out of the comfort zone, um, and then like amazing synchronicities happen. And if you look at storytelling, if you if you've ever studied character writing, you'll find that one of the best ways that you can reveal traits about a character is by putting putting them under pressure, right? So like having a character that's always nice. Well, then what a good writer will do will, will be to put that character under stress where they have to save someone or, or they have to make a difficult decision. And that's when you get to know the character. And if you use that kind of framework with ourselves, if we're always kind of comfortable and kind of plodding along, we're not really seeing ourselves as, as the heroes that we could be. And simply taking that first step into the container of the ascent where a lot of people were like, I just feel drawn to this. I feel this calling. I, you know, I'm a little bit hesitant. I'm a little bit nervous, but something inside is telling me to do it. Um, yeah, that's really a, a good sign of like when there's a bit of nervousness, a bit of excitement, usually something magical happens because you have to kind of rise to the occasion. You have to rise to the challenge. Um, and Eric can talk about this, that the idea of the rites of passage is something that's missing from modern society. This idea of kind of challenging ourselves and growing and being part of a tribe. So yeah, I think I, I just wanted to bring that point up. Yeah, this happened very powerfully to at least I can think of two or three examples from the from the first group where this happened immensely, where when you take a an actual bold step, like a definitive, like claimed step towards what you want and you choose what you want and you start making massive action towards it, the world actually responds to that and takes a step back towards you. And eventually you get like in those in those love movies where it's just the two people running with open arms towards each other. And like that happens. It's a real thing that happens. It's a real thing. I think Mike spoke about this in one of the workshops that we did, how if you're just waiting um, for exactly what you wrote that you wanted to happen you might miss like the 14 other ways that life is trying to open doors for you and that happened to a handful of people where you know we asked everyone to set like a subjective mountain peak for themselves like let's aim for this let's go do this and we'll give the support and scaffolding to help you along the way but there were a handful of people where com things completely out of out of the blue just emerged that were related but not exactly the peak that they had defined and actually, again, it was just from that that first second of a bold claim of actually walking in that direction that immediately life was like, okay, cool, I'll toss you two, three, four opportunities. And it comes up like, like clockwork. It's quite fantastic to see. Some people did pursue the exact thing and start delivering on that. And others just had these opportunities like, it's like making the bold choice was like watering seeds that were already planted but they were never able to grow because there was never that single like, I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to show up for myself and do this. And just that, yeah, the courageous leap, like really, really worked out.
for a few people in particular, and I think the group at large, and it was it's always astonishing to see. Yeah, I'm, I want to try to tie together what you guys just shared, because I, I feel like there's there's something that is, is really powerful here. You know, you, you John's talking about uh, leaving the Shire, you know, leaving the ordinary world behind, and then these these almost magical possibilities that um, are real beautiful serendipities. But I can describe what I think is happening from a pretty grounded perspective where you don't need to have any sort of, you know, you don't need to make any metaphysical claims to, to buy into this. And I've experienced this in my life so many times that I just, I, I believe it in my bones. You know, it's like I've lived through this. I see the ways that opportunities can, can surface themselves in ways that are completely unplanned, but feel so perfect. And it's like, it's almost like, man, I couldn't have written the story better. It's so great that it happened this way, you know? So it's maybe not divinely orchestrated, but I can appreciate the plot and the sort of uh, the beauty of story as it unfolds. But here's what I think happens. And some people listening might, a lot of people feel this way. I, I feel especially, you know, coming out, out of the heels of the pandemic, the feelings of stuckness, Feelings of, of being, you know, jaded or, or maybe just bored, just like, I don't know what to do. And in more intense moments, almost like this, like silent scream from your soul, feeling like I'm not on my path. I'm just like, I'm not in the right, I'm not walking where I need to be going. I feel like this is this is something, something's amiss, something's awry here. I need, I need to figure something out. I need to shake things up. And what happens is when you have sort of a radical departure from your experience, that that's what you need to kind of break break out of that jadedness to break out of that sense of stuckness otherwise you're just going to keep swirling in the same sort of patterns and behaviors and i think the ascent provided that for some people it gave them a new context and what happens when you're in a new context more choices become available to you and obvious to you that weren't obvious before you know we have these within our existing sort of like day-to-day -day life there are like certain sets of choices that seem like the right ones or like the ones we're trying to make. But if you really imagine like the entire range of choices that are possible, it's, it's huge, but they don't always occur to us. So when you thrust yourself in an environment where people are demonstrating, showing and communicating to you the other choices that are possible that could radically alter your life to help you get more aligned with the sort of the spirit of where you want to be going, then things start to change. And that's part of the, the where those opportunities and serendipities show up because now you're making choices that you weren't making before. So of course you're going to get feedback from life that is different. And so that's one thing I think on a on one level, it's it's helping people make those less obvious but really powerful choices that can create these huge transformations in their lives. Um, there's certain skills that you can use, deploy in the world to navigate to new, you know, greener pastures. Some people don't want to be stuck at the job that they're stuck at. So you can, you can find a different way. There's so many paths that aren't like the stated societal, like approved path that are out there. You just got to start like cutting through the weeds and then you'll see, oh, here it is. I got it. I figured it out, you know? So that's just one thing that I feel like is, is not um, often thought about. Like, you're, there's probably some choices you could make today that would start to dramatically alter your life. But what are those choices? And the ascent can help you like narrow in and pinpoint what exactly they are and give you the emotional support and the accountability to actually follow through on them. This, this also brings up the community point for me again, because I think you're exactly right. You know, if you at any moment with any aspect of your life, relationships, work, health, there's almost always that one like extremely scary, but also extremely exciting decision that you could make. And you almost always know what it is. Or it's just like, what is the, what would be the most powerful thing I could do right now? So the actual how to of this stuff is pretty simple. It's like, make that decision over and over again and act on whatever it is. But the way we get all tripped up is, well, if it's going to be difficult and a lot of people have this like one and done mentality or are stuck in it, right? Where it's like, if I try and it doesn't work out immediately, I suck, I can't do it, I'm stopping. And you just immediately drop off the thing. Or again, it might take, it might be a weight that you can't lift yet. 
And so having that support around you, those people who are like, yeah, you know, I want to see you keep going at this because I love the idea. Like that, having that just scaffolding around you so that you can kind of learn to ride the bike of making extremely, in, not intense, exciting and powerful decisions consistently over time, that will get you all the momentum you need to start going. Because yeah, moving in these directions takes takes a lot to get the initial ball rolling, but once the ball is rolling, it will take you extremely far, nearly by itself, and you're just showing up every day for the ride. But yeah, having that initial like fertile ground in people, in places that are safe to fail, in community that will lift you back up, and yeah, in the resources, in the how-tos of people who have scraped their knees doing this stuff before and have some ideas, that is just a perfect concoction take you exactly where you want to go or places you couldn't even imagine you wanted to go i'm building on that one of the things that is that is vital for us to grow and whether that be growing our ability to learn new things growing our skill set growing our you know emotional maturity is really good feedback like if we if we're not getting feedback that's like honest if that's all like distorted and and not true that can really mess us up and if we if we're kind of isolated a little bit as 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 many of us can be when we're kind of following this path of of spirituality or going the road less traveled what can happen is you can start to build up this idea about what you think you want or this idea of what you could be but you never actually put it to the test you know, so you, you're, you're there home thinking, oh, if only I had this, I'd be like that. If only I had this break, I'd be that successful person. And to individuals like this, I would say, well, put it to the test. You know, like you can now hang out with people that can help you in all of the ways that you want to be better. If you really wanted what you, you say you want, you can make use out of that. You know, so it's a really good kind of like way to kind of lean into your distortions and your irrational thoughts um and and see see the truth yeah and and that point about feedback is so so important and early feedback especially it could be devastating if someone isn't really sensitive to um the person who's delivering feedback if they're not sensitive to the fact that this is like a a fragile sort of creation and like an avenue that someone's exploring say you're wanting to start making music and you know it's not that good and the person just like tears you apart it could just you could it could just remove the any of the motivation to to keep moving forward but if they offer real constructive feedback and get excited with you about like the skill that you're learning that can be exactly what you need to kind of stay in motion so it's that balance between being honest so you can improve but also meeting you in the excitement and honoring all of the progress that you've made so far. And um, not everyone gets to have that, that feedback at early, early stages. And it's sad because, you know, so many dreams can die uh, in the womb because they weren't given that sort of fertile ground to, to really blossom. And that's one thing that I really, I feel quite proud of. I feel like we did bring together a group that offers that fertile ground there are people who are supportive and kind and compassionate and that want to see each other succeed and that in itself is this accelerator you know just to feel like you've got these people who have your back is a is a really sort of potent thing and one of the things you know we, we call this thing the ascent and that has sort of mythological connotations to it but you can just imagine you know, the, the, the hero looking at some great distant mountain shrouded subtly in fog, mysterious and far away, but also quite visible and, and in, in your sight. And then going on the journey to reaching the top to, to find whatever treasure might, might live there for whatever reason, you know, you're, you're heading in that direction. And when we, when we seek that out, uh, we all have the, our own mountain peaks in our lives. When we decide, you know, I'm going to embark on this journey and I'm going to day by day take these steps slowly but surely, you know, I will arrive at this mountaintop that can endow our life with so much meaning. 
you know, Joseph Campbell said, people don't want to know the meaning of life. They want to have the rapture of being alive, right? To I'm, I'm uh, para paraphrasing. That's not exactly what he said, but it, the point stands when you're like, you really get to feel alive. You get to feel like you're meeting life and getting to see what life has in store for you when you pursue a path like that. Um, so this can be, you know, I want to start a podcast or I want to start a newsletter. Or I want to, I want to leap into a new, you know, form of work, or explore remote work, I want to travel. There's all kinds of a sense that, that people feel drawn to, you know, and um, I just want, you know, people who are listening to feel like they can have permission to have those dreams. You know, you can, you can do it. You know, there's, there's so many resources out there for you to do it as well. So, you know, don't let that stuff die. We actually need you to pursue these gifts because I feel like there's a deep reason that you, you might be drawn to them and they can help sculpt you and shape you into, um, you know, a better human being. And we need those kinds of humans walking around on this earth, especially now. That was really beautiful. Yeah. And it, the, the hero's journey thing is so important because it's almost not what they what they climb or where they go that's important it's that it facilitates a change in the individual and they can actually come back to the collective as this evolved being capable of far more than they were than when they when they struck out on the quest this is what i meant earlier around how it was both surprising and reaffirming about the amount of inner work that this takes or that how much of this is an internal transformation because it on the surface, I think this is also where a lot of us are too hard on ourselves because on the surface, the action that we're taking might be putting up a website, releasing an offer to people, talking to someone that they haven't talked to. And it seems, it seems on the surface level, like incredibly straightforward. And it might actually be like an hour long task, but it requires an entire change in identity. This deep, like deep internal shift of, oh, I'm actually the kind of person who can do this. I actually deserve this. I actually want this and claiming that and owning that. And yeah, to your point, like it can be, it's extremely sensitive to actually go through that process. Like anyone who has shifted how they view themselves drastically knows that that can be a painful process. It can be extremely squishy, extre extremely vulnerable. Like it is not, it is not straightforward. Even though the thing that we're aiming at the peak can be something really simple. Like I want to, honor myself more. I want to be a better friend. I want to get my project up. Those things are actually really powerful in their simplicity, but it's not given that the process to get there is somewhat is straightforward at all. It can be really challenging. And again, it's like, this is something that always comes up on the retreats and it's coming up in the ascent as well of like, that is why this community of practice, this like Sangha around you to support you in doing this work is so important because it's almost a non-starter when you're trying to do something this sensitive and either the world is bombarding you with stuff or you're in a an environment or a context where people are actively, they're either not supportive, like they're neutral, or they're just actively hostile and saying like, no, you can't do that, that's so silly. Like that puts up, it's so much more weight for an individual to carry that yeah, one of the greatest gifts you can give people is actually just being like, I'm here for this. I'm here to help. You have support. You are safe. Let's go do this because damn, that adventure sounds like the adventure of a lifetime. And I'm here for that. Like, let's go, let's go walk it together. And you get like the fellowship of the ring, right? It wasn't Frodo <laughs> by himself that did this. There were a lot of hands that went into that entire process. And so, yeah, the community and the inner work and the willingness to engage in the external world. I think a lot of us a lot of the spiritual community has this like aversion to it oh it's all an illusion it's not real it's not important shouldn't desire anything material but damn your engagement with the external is the best catalyst to facilitate your internal transformation that exists yeah i like your point a lot about the internal shifts being sometimes the invisible uh, components of this journey but the most significant at the same time speaking about my own experience and when it comes to writing when I first started writing I was very defensive about any kind of outward criticism 
You know, like if anyone wanted to change anything I wrote, I'd have like 50 arguments as to why they weren't seeing it my way and like why they weren't they were missing the nuance of the sentence and all this kind of thing. And now I'm I'm at a point where if if one of you guys edits my article, I'm going to accept 95% of your edits. Right? So like how do you how do you emotionally go from that the place of every every piece of feedback I'm kind of defending and resisting to you know, you're probably right. And, you know, the article is a living, evolving, changeable thing. There are always an, inf- an like an infinite amount of different sentences I could write. I should probably just do the best that I can, make it as good as I can, then move on. Like to make that shift from that first place to the second place is, it's tough. Like, and the only way you can really do it is by doing it, by taking feedback, by going through the process, by looking at yourself going, I'm kind of a bit too defensive with my writing and, you know these guys do know what they're talking about and, and and just going through that process time and time again and and starting to like let go just switching topics a little bit as well there's there's like an evolutionary reason i think why putting our creative work out there could be so painful you know the idea of sexual selection which is this idea that you know writing poetry or creating art you know, it's very human, you know, it's a very human thing to, to make masterpieces, you know, you don't, you don't often see like other animals create like the ninth symphony, for example, that's kind of an unusual thing. And that might have been what, like there's some theories that might have been one of the reasons why humans evolved the way that we did and, and why we have art because we could exhibit to people in our community, in our tribes that you know we we have this amazing talent, we have this amazing mind, this, this amazing ability that I'm communicating beyond words. And the cool thing about that is when you can do it successfully, you get elevated to the status of a rock star. But if you do it and you and you flounder, you get ridiculed and it's harsh and you get rejected, you know? And so you have your eyes on this, this rock star vision, but to get there, you have to mess up and you have to fail. And that first trying period can be so disappointing that it turns us off. The, the path and there's a one of my favorite quotes by Epictetus obviously you know you know I love stoicism is he used this this idea of of a, a person be, wanting to become a philosopher but I think this applies to someone wanting to create a business or do online work or create art he said that when you first tell people that you want to become a philosopher they will tell you that you can't do it and they'll ridicule you and laugh at you if you quit when this happens, they'll ridicule you twice more, twice as much. But if you stay on the path, eventually they'll ask you how you became a philosopher. And there's, there's that kind of, there's that, that path where we get these trials and tribulations and these tests on this hero's journey. And if we quit then, you know, if, things might get even worse. So the key is to hold tight, to hold strong, to, to follow it through. Um, and coming back to the ascent that's the point of the ascent is like we are doing it together you know you know we are when you feel that that resistance when you feel the test we'll be there and we'll be the one saying we won't be ridiculing you we'll be saying stay true to the path so i think there's so much value in that yeah there's something really um really key here i think with really beginning to lean in and and share our gifts, that process can be destabilizing. Um, You know, like what you're describing, John, the the ridicule that you risk, but another side to it is the way that you relate to your own unmanifested potential. Could you could like internally give yourself extra point, like bonus points of like, I have all this potential. Like if I really used it, man, I could be great. And you kind of hold on to that as like a little like teddy bear to make yourself feel good. But when you, and when you start to like put it out there, you realize, oh wow, like the gap between what I'm capable of and what I'm able to do in this moment is maybe larger than I imagined. And that is a difficult reality check. And so a lot of people avoid those moments of leaning in because of what they would then have to face, you know, they, and, and they'd have to see that there, that there's still a lot of refinement and work that needs to be done. And maybe it's not going to be as easy as they thought. 
um, but still completely worthwhile and fruitful. But it's almost like the you have to pay the debt of uh, the sort of uh, bonus identity points that you'd been claiming, you know, during this time of not actually acting on the the talent that you possess. Because that's the thing about talent; it needs to be refined. You need to, you know, really develop a craftsmanship and and you know engage yourself so that it, the talent can shine through and get get out of your own way uh, so that you know that stuff can actually be realized um, it's not an easy thing and um, but it's so worth it you know because actually realized potential versus the the stuff that we might hold on to internally it's just the experience of of creating and sharing with people and really feeling like it's it's an important work that you made whatever it may be is just it's one of the best parts of being alive i think that you get to do that 80 percent, 80 percent of something in the world is way better than 100 percent of something that's just in your head like bar none every single time and there's a there are two things that you guys just sparked. One was that um, John has this line that I love of, well, do you actually want the thing or do you just want to talk about it? Like, do you just want to act like you want it? Because there's way different approach. You'd have a whole different way of being depending on that. Most people like to say that they want to be a writer. Very few people like to put out 50 drafts of something and watch it get torn apart time and time again and feel worse every time because you thought it was so good, that last revision. Um, but like, that's the, that's the process. And the thing that, this is again, why I think like these kind of safe communities or incubators are so helpful is because there's nothing in common culture or media right now that glorifies or even demonstrates the process of becoming good at something. You only ever see these people when they're at like, they've been highly cultivated and they've been actually put through their own incubator. Like all like major artists and stars go through this like priming stage where they just have a whole team of people who is like facilitating their sound and teaching them how to do interviews and all this shit. So that by the time a lot of people start seeing them, they're like, actually they're polished. They have all this stuff together, but you never see, you never see the years and the hours that went into the actual process. It's even the same thing that would, that's mirrored in social media algorithms. Like you see like the highlight reels that get tens of thousands of shares, but if someone puts up like their process videos, like you get five likes and a comment from your mom saying like, good job. And yet that is like, that is the part that should be, that is the most potent part for someone. If they're sharing like their process and where they are and where they've come from and where they want to go. And someone actually says, this is really cool. You're doing amazing. That means so much and can entirely shift someone's trajectory. And yet we as a society have just hidden it under the rug entirely, both physically and literally like we individuals will not often share messy process until it's something polished and perfect. And even just the algorithms and interest of the external world hardly glorify it at all. And yet it is absolutely beautiful. And so it's tricky. And so again, come into these communities of practice, communities of people who are like incubating, who are cultivating these skills so you can go through the messy part and actually have a little bit of fun while you're doing it. Yeah, um, so that part of, of society covering up the, the failures on on the path to success i'm very passionate about this and so there's a, a speaker uh, and, a, and a writer that i really admire tal ben shahar he's a he's he taught at harvard positive psychology and even though he's a teacher of positive psychology he studied philosophy he's read all of the self-help books you you can imagine he he tells people that the best self-improvement books are biographies for that very reason like you actually get to see the real story, like the real uh, side of success. And I just want to read out a list of, um, there's a historical example of this, which I think is really fascinating. So there's a person in history, right? I'm just going to give you the, the cliff notes of this person's failures, right? So this is a real person in history. In 1832, they lost their job and were defeated for state legislature. 
1933, they failed in business. In 1835, a sweetheart died. 1836, they had a nervous breakdown. 1838, they were defeated for Speaker. 1843, defeated for nomination for Congress. 1848, lost renomination. 1849, rejected for land officer. 1854, defeated for U.S. Senate. 1856, defeated for nomination for vice president. 1858, again defeated for U.S. Senate. 1860, elected president. And this is and I guess Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. Ah, I knew it was Lincoln. <laughs> um, but in every failure there, you can you can also see what good things happened. You know, you can always see like, well, that gave him an opportunity. And you might just like if if you only saw the the movie of Lincoln, you'd just be like, oh, such a charismatic, wonderful person. Wow, so lucky to be that way. And it's like the guy paid his dues, you know, like <laughs> and, and that's amazing. That makes it that makes him who he is. You know, he didn't become president in spite of those failures. He became president because of them, because it shaped his character. Um, so, yeah, I love examples like that in, in history. And what's what's a more interesting story, a story where he is successful every step of the way? Or a story where this this major turn of events happens, where you know, and to me it's obviously the second one, and this is also, and this is related to uh, Stoic philosophy, but it's also related to just what makes a good story. You you need adversity, you need pressure and and tension and and discord and chaos at times to make it interesting, and so. When we throw ourselves into, when we're like really trying to write our story and like live a life that feels true to ourselves, um, that stuff's going to happen. We're going to have failures and chaos is going to emerge and it's going to be really difficult at times, but it's really good to remember that, oh, this, this is advancing the plot. Like this is good in a way it's challenging, but there's a way that this is really good. What does, what kind of opportunity am I afforded here in this space? that can, you know, inform and inspire uh, parts of my being that wouldn't have been able to show up or be cultivated if I had just been successful. Like there can be real gifts in failure, you know, especially the meta gift when you when you continue to show up in the face of failure over and over and over and just keep moving forward. I mean, you see that in Lincoln, he just just didn't stop, which is that's a good a good thing to take away from that story. Just keep going, keep learning, keep going. You never know what will happen. Um, and to to circle back a bit on this conversation about you know highlight reels versus the skeletons in the closet or whatever they may be. To offer a personal example, I'm a magician. I've been doing magic since I was 13 years old. And people, if they saw a magic trick today, they'd be very impressed. It's like like a lot of skill, a lot of time spent honing that uh, that ability. But if they saw me when I was younger, they would see they would have seen just a, a meek sort of like sheepish relationship to performing, not really wanting to do it. I just practiced by myself in front of the mirror and wouldn't you know show people. And then once I started to show people, my hands would shake, my face would get red. I wouldn't know what to say. Sometimes I'd mess up. And the tricks wouldn't go right. And that's just when you're a magician and the trick goes wrong. I mean, that's just that sucks. It's like being a comedian on stage telling a joke and people don't laugh. Right. Um, and but all of that stuff, like I had to live through that to get to the place that I am now. But you wouldn't see any of that if you were just watching a trick in front of me. You know, that would all be in the background. So I think there's this sort of. Um, the way our media is structured and the way that we sort of tout our heroes, it's easy to not um, be present to this stuff. It's easy to think that, oh, they're just always that good. They just have this natural ability, you know, and it's like there's some hard won, um, you know, wisdom and capacity that comes from failure and, and challenges and all of that kind of stuff. So. If you're listening and you're someone who's even feels like, yeah, I've tried this before and it didn't work, or I really, I really wanted to go for my dream and things fell through. Okay. Well, 
I mean, you know how many like at bats you have in this life? Who said you get one shot? Why don't you pick up the bat again and start swinging for the fences, man? Just like, just rip it. And you're going to get so strong at that swing that eventually it's going to be the perfect pitch. And it's going to, you know, it's going to be a home run. I don't even like baseball, but it's great for metaphorical purposes. <laughs> you know, it's quite a common thing where people um, like mirror or mimic uh, people that they idolize or they want to be like. Like, let me dress like them. Let me talk like them. Let me do the things that I see them doing on the surface right now. You know, really, if you wanted to be like the people you admire, you should try failing as much as they have. Like, if you want to do anything like them, you should just fuck up a whole lot because you know that they did. And then they just showed up again day two, ready to do that all again, and eventually stumbled into where they are now. It's like the, it's probably the most important thing you could copy from anyone is just like the number of failures that someone has. And yet it's like the last thing that anyone wants to do. Because again, you know, it hurts your ego. It's like, oh, I can't do this perfectly right now. But honestly, it is the, the paradigm flip that would change everything for people. There's this, I guess it's just a line, like an aphorism of the master has failed more times than the beginner has ever tried. And almost everything you need to know is right in that. Like it is just, again, it's a cultivated skill. Like whatever you want, your relationship, your work, your health, it's all just a cultivated skill over time. And so it's more of, it's more of consistency. It's more of how many times can you show back up rather than the specifics of the things you're doing. James Clear, a classic example of this. And it's one of my favorite one of my favorite examples, he's like, you know, so many people when they start going to the gym, start worrying about like timing of their protein shakes and what kind of lifting shoes they need. And really it's like, you look, if you're starting to go to the gym, like, can you consistently go three times a week? Like until you have mastered consistency, actually showing up for the thing, don't worry about optimizing anything because you're not optimizing a thing yet. You haven't even been able to show up consistently at it. And it's the same thing. Like, don't worry about writing apps if you're trying to write something. Like, get the notes app on your phone and write something. You can worry about that, tweaking it later. Just get the actual thing in place. And that will take you extremely, extremely far. Bil building on that, EP, uh, on the James Clear point, so you and I did a podcast on the Mind Illuminated, the, the meditation manual. And the author of that book, Kula Dasa, says that if you're struggling with your meditation practice, if you're struggling with, you know, your concentration, you get into too many distractions, you're not feeling very motivated, like the best ever meditation hack, like of all time, and this blew my mind when I discovered it, <laughs> is to learn to enjoy meditating. Like, but it's like, it's such a good idea. Like you actually decide to frame it in your head as like, I'm actually looking forward to this and I'm gonna sit here and try to find things that, I, that are pleasant about this. Instead of sitting there thinking, I've got to do this, I've got to get there, I've got to make progress. You just think, oh, I'm, I'm just gonna, whatever happens, I'm just, the main thing is I'm gonna try and enjoy this. And if you do that with any new habit, it's like, it's, it's the best hack ever, like with the gym. like yeah don't try optimizing your routine try to enjoy going to the gym if that means listening to an audiobook or doing suboptimal exercises cool at least you're going at least you're enjoying it um yeah super powerful point whatever you're doing if you feel resistance to it ask yourself that very simple question what needs to change so that this can become more pleasant you know and even if it's not perfect even if it's way from perfect super far from perfect if you can enjoy it, you get consistency and out of consistency, you get success. Yeah, this, this reminds me of this, this notion I have that the real law of attraction is just uh, intrinsic motivation, positive feedback loops, where you're just like you're saying, John, you enjoy the thing. So you keep doing it. And the more you do it, the more you like it because you're getting the sense of mastery and progress and the details are becoming more revealed to you. You're getting to see your improvement over time and you just enjoy, you just enjoy the process that you're in. Of course, you know, maybe there are times you don't, it's not, nothing is static, but when you start to find that place, then it, 
it changes everything. It's also related to this idea of short-term versus long-term value. Both exist, right? But if you think in terms of going for a run, can you find that runner's high? Can you find the like a cadence and a rhythm that you that just feels really good? Can you enjoy the exploration of being on your feet and being nimble and being engaged in that as a short as short-term value? Um, and also holding the long-term value of I'm getting in shape, my body, I'm going to be healthy and all of those other things. But in when confronting the actual activity, that's more abstract. So it has less sort of juice in terms of like getting you out the door and doing the thing. So find like the skillfulness around finding those, that kind of value and really indulging in it creates that sort of, um, that sort of, uh, virtuous cycle that, you know, really, really helps perpetuate itself. And, um, to shift a little bit, I want to talk about how this, one of the ways, you know, we've talked about the ascents and in some ways been a little bit cryptic. So I want people to be able to envision something. If you could imagine yourself walking, you know, finding this beautiful um, house with many rooms in it, um, and you, you know, walk through the front door and you start to walk around and you see in on the, in these different rooms, you know, each room has really awesome doors that like look mystical and cool and, and just, it just feels like, wow, this place is there's something special going on here. And on the labeled on the doors are, are different things like uh, emotional processing or productivity, ninjutsu, or uh, overcoming your inner critic or, um, you know, all there's all there's all kinds of things. I'm sure you guys have some examples, you know, off the top of your head that you can throw in there. Hard skills, how to how to launch a newsletter, how to reach out, how to connect with anyone. All these kinds of um, skill sets that are completely grounded in practical practical, but sort of magical in the results that they can produce. It's like it, it's like wow. So you walk in, you and then you have the option every day over eight weeks, you know, what, what rooms you're going to go into, what kind of experiences you're going to have and the kinds of interactions you're going to, um, you know, engage with. So I offer this because of course this isn't an actual building. It's uh, digital. Like you're going to jump into interactive zoom calls, workshops, mastermind sessions, things like that. But you have, you know, a lot of opportunity to find and locate the things that are really meaningful to you and especially meaningful at that particular moment in time because it's not just oh i want to learn about this thing in some abstract sense but sometimes we really need to have a session that enables us to work with our negative self-talk because it's really extreme that day so there's a, there's a beautiful spontaneity that can emerge from it as well but i think you know that that analogy of you know imagining almost like this Hogwarts-esque wizard school that has a bunch of mentors who've walked the path who can show you the shortcuts. Um, well, sh I say shortcuts in air quotes because, uh, you know, they're not really shortcuts. You still got to do the work, but they can help you um, not f wander down paths that might be unproductive. Um, so I just think that's an interesting way of visualizing part of the experience that people get when they join the Ascent. Yeah, I like the X Men Academy idea behind it. Um, yeah, and the other the other point I would add to that is like what I really appreciated about this round, and what I think is something that will and can and will persist over time is like if you're walking around the school looking for this room, but you can't quite find it, you can actually just say out loud like, "Oh, damn! I wish there was a session on how to run a retreat." how to do a big experience like in person and bam, it just like shows up the next week. Like it's, it's very much a, a communication with the group that we have. Like, what do you need? What are you struggling with? What could unlock you even further right now? And that can immediately just loop itself back into the curriculum. And that, that balance of here's what, here's where we've bumped into objects before. Let's try to avoid these and the, and the dynamic of, oh, well, I could actually really use this. Can we do this? Um, makes for this really just, again, powerful incubator 
where you're addressing the things you need to address, you're working on the things that might be best practices or good systems, and then beyond that, you're doing it again with just these, yeah, wizards was a good word, just wizards in a community of study cultivating really strong skills that will take you very far over time. And one of the things that I've seen with people that have that I, I consider to be good at what they do is they invariably are very good at cutting through BS. So when I see people that work solo and they spend a lot of time working on their own, they are they're often not quite clear on how they should spend their time effectively, right? So the beauty of working as part of a team with actual mentors there is they'll be able to do something that's very magical. They'll be able to tell you what you shouldn't be focusing on, right? So like I had a friend, for example, to ground this, who wanted to start their own blog. And they wanted to write a blog and, and become a coach. And it was a health blog. And they had this idea that they would hand draw on an iPad every featured image on every post. And this process would take them about six hours to do for every featured image on this post. And, you know, my experience working in a team, working on high existence, if I came to you guys and I said, guys, bear with me, I want to spend 18 hours a week drawing iPad images that would be the featured images on posts. Do you think that's a good use of my time? You'd like spit your coffee out and be like, no. <laughs> Um, because we're actually like working as part of a legit team, as part of a legit business. But he was thinking, I'm on my home, there's no big deal. And he didn't really see the opportunity cost of that. He didn't really see that because he was spending all these hours doing this drawing, he wasn't able to focus on other stuff that was way more high yield, way better uh, use of his time. So if you have any ideas about being creative and, and you come to people that are already doing the work that you aspire to do, and, and you can just say to them, you know, like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. We'll be able to say to you, like, that's not a good idea. Like, do this instead. And and one moment, literally one moment, could save you hundreds of hours of struggles. Like, that's how powerful this is. You can't get that from a book. Like, a book just, pres like, a book happens to you. Like, a book is something you read and it just, like, gives you a lot of knowledge. Cool. But no, you don't talk to a book. You don't say like, here's what I'm thinking. Here's here's how I want to create this newsletter. Um, here's who I want to send it to. Here's who my perfect audience is. Here's the product that I want to create. What do you think about it, book? You, you're met with silence. But when you, when you speak to mentors, they can actually direct you and give you really clear feedback. So that mentorship side of the ascent as well, I think is something that I, that I wish I had had when I first started. It would have saved me a lot of time, a lot of time. Another way that you can think about this is imagine, you know, and this might not be obvious to everyone, but building websites, just walk up the sort of stack here. You would, you'd have gone from knowing zeros and ones to working with code to maybe having some, some form of a clunky website builder. Um, or you're getting a theme and then modifying that. So you're, you're doing less code and then having a clunky website builder to now. There's all kinds of things you can use to build websites extremely quickly. And it might not be the most customized thing, but when you're starting out, you don't need the most customized thing. Having the most customized thing would likely be a waste of time, like John's saying. And there's so many things like that where people imagine the path to creating it is a lot harder and arduous that it actually is because of all the tools that have come online even in the last three years there are so many tools that i know in my head from doing this stuff and, and be, you know being involved with you guys for so long and just just exploring this whole digital realm um that i can i could save people so much time by just saying yeah just use this tool and this is good enough this will get you there um the kinds of because we have these tools it's almost like there are these new um, capacities opening up for people where in the past that wouldn't have been able to uh, accomplish this kind of stuff. You wouldn't be able to be someone who could edit a video and create graphics and, and write articles 
and publish it all. And, and, you know, they used to have whole teams doing this stuff like years ago. And now it's all consolidating because the tools that we have are helping us do things a lot more quickly. And is there some cost to those tools? Yes, you lose some flexibility, but you get things done more quickly. And so just being able to ask someone like, what would be a good way to do this? And then get the, the right two or three tools that will help you do it extremely quickly and give you a, a finished product that is actually solid. That's, that's not, uh, that's no small thing to be able to tune into that. You know what I mean? So that's something that not everyone realizes that is worth realizing because a lot of stuff can be it. Our psychological disposition towards it is it must be harder than I think it is. And or no, it must be harder. That's what that's what we think. But when you get into actually doing it, the hardest part is confronting the internal blocks and the challenges that are surfacing that are identity related and our insecurities and stuff like that. So that's why it's so great. I love that we have this blend of the soft skills, like the working with those processes in ourself, the personal growth oriented stuff, paired with this hard skills actually doing the thing out in the world, learning and growing from that process. Having that blend, that's really the arc reactor of transformation here that is, is if someone really commits, to, commits themselves to it, some profound things will occur. Yeah, this is the DNA double helix. Outer, inner work, outer expression, over and over and over again. Positive feedback loop between the two of them. And it's, uh, yeah, I, I think there's a way it can, a lot of this stuff can seem almost contradictory at times. Because we're like, it is actually immensely, probably a lot easier than people think to do almost anything that they have in their mind. And it can feel like a shortcut. Like, oh, I thought this was supposed to be something that I was working hard at every day. And just like chipping, chipping away at the marble, like piece by piece. But the idea is, no, you take on bigger and bigger and bigger things over time. Like, I don't want people to spend all their time figuring out software and figuring out copy. Like, no, get the, get the skills out of the way so you can actually just use them in service of expressing the biggest, most visionary gift you have for the planet. Like, that, that's the thing that should be the aim. And so many of us get caught up on the, oh, yeah, but I don't know what to use. I don't know how to do this. I don't know where to go. I don't know who to listen to. Like, if we could do anything for people, it would be clearing away the bullshit like that so that honestly people can just pour their heart and their essence and their creativity into the world. That's what the world needs. That what That's what your soul needs. Like it needs more of that and getting the, yeah, the foundations out of that, getting the internal blocks cleared and getting this basic skills and toolkit ready that you'll need. You do walk out like this, um, trying to think of a good image, but just like a straight ninja. You've got a handful of tools that are like hyper specialized. You're ready to go. You've got the skill, you've got the foundation, and now you go out on your missions, right? You go out and you actually tackle whatever you can lift at that time. And ideally, as you show up more and more, your strength builds, your confidence grows, and you can just take on bigger and bigger things, right? Like you can go from a blog to an experience to mastermind calls to in-person retreats, like just keep taking keep aiming bigger keep aiming bigger and show up for it because god it is the adventure of a lifetime it's really beautiful and quickly john that experience um of you know reaching a mountain peak in some ways it's it's about it's not even about that one i mean of course it is to some degree but all of the future peaks that that lie in waiting that you then feel capable of pursuing because you've got this uh, sense that you can figure it out, that you can learn the skills, that it's it's all there. If you just apply a bit of attention and will and discernment, you can you can carve your path, you can make your way. And to know that at a, in a deep way is such a profound thing to let in and accept because of all the possibilities that start surging to the surface. You know, before that, if you feel like, oh, I can't, all these things I can't do. It's so hard. It's so difficult. No, it might be difficult and challenging, but it's nothing you can't, you know, unlock in yourself, but just a little bit of application and, and using the resources that you have, asking people, figuring it out. You can, it's all figure outable and knowing that deep in your bones 
it's such a great thing to walk away with because you know it's just all the future peaks in sight now for some some way become a lot more approachable you know yeah and this for me this tr triggers the idea of the value of knowing something is possible so before you embark on any kind of adventure or you learn any new skill you have to first believe that it's possible and there are so many areas in our map of reality that are that are covered up by impossibility or not 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 understanding so you know like let's just take mike your example of you know becoming a high level magician right like if why would you dedicate hundreds of hours thousands of hours practicing magic if you had zero idea that becoming a high level magician was even possible right if, if he was just like oh yeah no I, I i don't know if anyone can actually be that good you know it's like you see these amazing performers and you go wow that's possible that's possible i didn't realize that before and now i see it i'm actually i have a name now um and, and in my own life there's so much that's like that like first you need to see that something's possible um for you to dedicate the time to do it a lot of people listening to this probably don't believe that they could make five thousand dollars by the end of the month you know on a new project from scratch right and, and and i don't blame you you know i'm not saying that it's easy i'm not saying that everyone could just do it at the snap of the fingers but there definitely are strategies that you could do that would make it definitely like within the realm of possibility you know it would not be impossible let's say that you know it would definitely be possible more possible than you currently think but why on earth would you even attempt that if you didn't see someone who's already done it and has, and has walked you through the exact process to do it it's only when you see that do you go okay now i can spend the energy doing this if you didn't have that blueprint if you didn't have that map telling you that it's possible you would be kind of crazy to even attempt it in a way because you'd be spending all of this time and, and effort kind of like guessing like oh I, this might work i have no idea but when you have mentors and, and people around you that are on the path that are showing you exactly how they did it suddenly it opens up this this realm of what was previously impossible is now possible and for me the ascent more than anything is about that it's about wow there, there are so many areas of this map of of my life and reality that i thought were, were not feasible not possible and now i see that if i choose to i can go there and i can have these new aims um and yeah just breaking past those limiting beliefs is insanely powerful like insanely powerful i was talking with justin who's been on the show a fair bit also one of the facilitators of the ascent and we were we we're looking at other ways to present like the vision planning exercise because for some people it can be difficult to actually pick an aim and he had this line that I, that like moved my body right when I heard it. He was like, what ghost will haunt you the most? Like towards the end of your life. And that like shook me. Cause again, there's probably something, if you sit still and listen to it, there's something inside of you that's like, damn, if I don't even try to do this, like this will stay with me and it will hurt. It will hurt my heart because I knew that I had it in me. And you had it in you because it was in you. It's something that you feel. Like it's there. It's a reality for you. And damn, not not embarking on that is something that haunts a lot of us. And it can be this thing of just, wow, if I do anything, I'm going to at least show up for this. I'm going to like do what I can, do my 50% of the conversation with life and actually arrive and say, okay, I'm here. I'm, I'm up for the task. Like let's go on this adventure. And yeah, like we said right at the beginning, taking those first steps might actually take you immediately on an entirely different path, but never once like showing up to the door of like your possible life and knocking on it is a tragedy, a tragedy. And it's really sad if we are actually the thing that holds us back, like has our fist at the door and never actually knocks because we're what? Scared, uncertain, had people from the past who weren't looking out for us tell us otherwise. Like those things are yeah they hurt they hurt my heart <laughs> they hurt my heart even just saying that 
And so if there's anything that we can do, right, if there's a way to actually show up for people and say, no, you know, let's knock, let's take this adventure together because whatever you have in you is beautiful. You're a part of life. It's going to be amazing. Taking that adventure together and actually doing that is something, regardless of what the outcome is, you will actually look back on and be like, yeah, I'm really glad I showed up for that. This, that line, uh, what, what is the ghost that will haunt you the most? I mean, that sounds like a song lyric, um, but it reminds me of this uh, phrase, don't, don't uh, die with your music still inside you, you know, like we all have that sort of song that wants to be sung and maybe it's just the first few notes, you know, it might not be a whole symphony, but the point is by beginning to play those notes by, by allowing the beginning of that song uh to be sung then the rest of it can start to unfold um but i think this connects back to that feeling the feelings of restlessness of feeling stuck of feeling like you're not really on your path and all that kind of stuff um it's in part because you feel that that clamoring in you that song that's like hey let me out of here the world needs to hear this whatever in whatever sort of manifestation that might be so Yeah, I just want people to feel like they have permission for that that song to come out. And it's, um, you know, it doesn't need to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect. Don't worry. (laughs) It's not going to be perfect at all. It's going to be, you know, ugly in some ways at the start, both in your process around it and what you create. But it's also going to have its beauty to it. Um, So, yeah, there's, there's so many... You know, I'm, I'm sensitive to the people who are listening to this that, that have dreams or feel so disconnected from their, their felt sense of permission to dream that they feel so distant from, uh, from something like that, that I really want you to allow yourself and give yourself the gift of having those dreams and knowing that you do have it in you to explore new heights, to seek out new adventure and to become a version of you that, you know, the version of you today, you know, can only imagine, but you can move so far beyond uh, what, how it is you're you're currently interacting with your world. There's so much growth that's possible. And that growth is accelerated in fertile soil. And we are doing our best to create environments that offer that rich soil where people can bloom. And uh, because that's, it's what the world needs, you know, the world needs a lot of things, but that's one of them. Yeah. That really just sparked something in me quickly. I'm, I'm here for the lines today. Apparently another one I've heard recently that I really liked was anxiety is just stifled power. Uh, came from a woman on Instagram and I absolutely love that because if you use like the analogy of a sunflower or a plant or something like that, like, it is in its nature to grow and express itself without hesitation. And actually the things that get in its way are the environment and the context that it's in. You know, maybe it's not getting enough sun, water, nutrients, maybe the soil's bad, maybe the dog steps on it every day. Like you, the containers, the actual structure is just as important for your growth as like the DNA inside of you. And again, you are a living thing. It is in your nature to just grow and express and flourish when the conditions are correct. And so much, so often we just blame ourselves for this. Like, why can't I do this? Why is this so hard? Well, maybe you just needed a better context. Maybe you just needed a container that was actually nourishing instead of you having to fight for like every every inch from it. Um, yeah, like these the containers can do so much for us. They're so absolutely central, more than we might think. We always attribute it to like personal willpower. And yes, there's, you know, 50% of it is showing up. 50% of it is just, where are you? Who are you with? How much do you laugh? Like get the, get the conditions and the environment right and your flourishing and growth will happen damn near by itself and probably a lot quicker and easier than you anticipate. Yeah, that's that's one of the key things. And that's what's so beautiful about the age that we live in. We can find, we can create sort of digital environments. If it's more, if it's hard to leave where we are physically, we can start by leaning into creating these online 
digital relationships with people and have a lot of, you know, really high quality, meaningful experiences with them. I mean, just the three of us, like since we haven't seen each other in person in quite some time, but we have dramatic influence and impact on each other's lives because we have digital technology to facilitate those interactions. And so you might not be able to uproot your life, but you can begin to build relationships that do resonate with you because of this amazing technology that we have. And once you have that, it becomes so much easier to know what to look for in the, in the 3D meat space friendships that you might build. And people, like once you start building more relationships, the possibilities grow exponentially where people can say, oh, I can introduce you to this person. They're actually near where you live. And then all of a sudden you start to build a whole new community around you just based on a few new relationships that you made online. Like that's totally possible. And that's because most people come with at least, you know, two to three solid connections attached to them where there'd be like rock solid people to, to know and, and introduce you to. So it just it becomes this accelerated curve. You just start putting yourself out there more, meeting people, making these relationships. Um, your life can can transform dramatically because you know a huge part is is the people we surround ourselves with, and a lot of the internal dialogue and the self talk we have is uh, the tone is set by the kinds of uh, relationships that we're fostering and nourishing. You know, if you have people that you're surrounding yourself with that are really wanting you to, to feel uplifted and wanting to celebrate your gifts and celebrate your, your attempts. That's so different from the people who want to keep you, keep you down because your reaching for the stars would make them feel insecure. Um, and, and it's such a tragedy that a lot of people have to deal with that, but we don't have to stay stuck in that. There are pathways. Mm -hmm. And so find those pathways, seek them out. One of the things that the high existence team prides ourselves on is that we are walking the talk. You know, we are all on this journey together. We are not at some final destination, you know, looking down from the clouds like we're there. <laughs> you know, we'll show you how to get up here. You know, when we create apotheosis retreats, we are participants as well. You know, like we are going on a journey too. We are always looking to grow and learn. And the same thing with the ascent. I tell people that are thinking about joining, like I'm looking forward to learning from you. You know, it's a two way thing. Like we, we're always learning. So using that as inspiration, I'd like to ask you guys that a question um, about what you, what you personally got out of the experience you know, of, of working with this amazing tribe and these facilitators and, you know, were there any changes in your own kind of projects or how you approach, you know, work or creativity, any kind of inspirations that you're taking away from it? I'm, I'm sure there might be some others that surface, but the two things that immediately flashed to my mind, one is like a super practical, like tactical tip that like became clear like if you're leading workshops and stuff that just became so clear by the end of it um and that is rather than just opening like asking people to share broadly it's like nominate people to start sharing and the kind of discussion just having that little bit of structure kind of discussion that's going to emerge from that versus just leaving it wide open uh it's just run run the nomination process and got to give a shout out to justin for banging that drum and being uh you know an implementer of that of that strategy himself. So that's something that's really useful in terms of workshops. And the other thing that is more of a, a real refined insight when, um, you know, working with groups is just how one person's uh, willingness to lean in and share something vulnerable can really just change the entire tenor of the, of the group dynamic. And there are multiple times asynchronously and on calls where I remember someone sort of taking that leap, sinking a bit deeper and, and sharing from that place and just how that acts as an invitation for others to, to jump in there as well. And the kind of uh, bonds and, and the strength of connection that can form from that. So it just reinforces and reaffirms the real value of vulnerability, not just for the person who's sharing, but for everyone who gets to witness. That's one thing about vulnerability. It can be easy to feel like our vulnerability is a burden to those who are receiving it, but so often it's a gift. So often it's so appreciated and so meaningful to be in the presence of that. So that's just something that is really 
those two st stick out at me, but I'm sure there's there's more that might surface. I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say, though. There's a very bitter medicine for me on a lot of these experiences because when I'm coming, you know, I did I did some exp uh, some workshops on on vision planning, on how to get things done, on how to manage your energy, and it is always difficult actually to then take that back onto my own life and say, how am I living up to these principles that I'm espousing to people? Because again, time and time again, it is very easy to know and say the thing conceptually, but talk is very cheap. Like talk is extremely cheap. Like how does it live in your bones and in your actions? Um, and so in that way, it's actually like a nice, almost a feedback loop for myself, these experiences, just because there are so many classes, like, you know, looking at all the ways I still speak down to myself internally, even when there's no one around and actually coming to terms with that, like being like, yeah, there's still work to be done here was immensely valuable. It's really helped. It's actually helped me start birthing some new things on my own it's helped me show up for the high existence team more like it is an ongoing process and i think i would generalize this but I'll, I'll speak certainly for myself primarily that any of the stuff that i speak about is just as much advice for myself as it is anyone else the only reason i even think that it has any form of value for anyone else is because it has value for me and i'm just not a that unique of a person like these are human problems and so yeah there's very much a, a taking your own medicine eating your own dog food kind of thing that goes on here um, and that is consistently probably the most valuable thing i get is just am i living up to this how, how much have i actually integrated these lessons and what's the opportunity to keep going right what are the bigger areas that you can aim for so a lot of good comes out of these. And again, sometimes you don't even have to put your finger on it. Sometimes it is just this identity shift where it's like, okay, taking more responsibility here. Let's get more in alignment and let's go express more. Let's take the lead. And that stuff just snowballs down the road. So yeah, Eric, really interesting what you say about um, the advice that you give to yourself being very valuable for others. Um, because one of the greatest self-improvement slash philo philosophical works of all time that has really helped a lot of people from world leaders, the people struggling with their business, the people experiencing chaos, was a book that consisted of notes that a person wrote to himself for guidance. And that book is The Meditations of Marcus Aurelius. Um, so there's so much value in, you know, like giving yourself guidance and then sharing that guidance with other people. Um, so that I, I love that, so powerful. For my own learnings and lessons, there's just so many to name, but one of them was one one of the things I loved so much about the ascent was we had a lot of highly structured experiences, you know, like really meticulous workshops that were, you know, really well thought out with with many exercises. But then there was also amazing space for more free flowing conversation and more like like hanging out with an intention. You know, so like not pure hanging out, but hanging out with an intention um, and with a purpose and the purpose being to grow and to learn and to share and to be vulnerable. And I got to experience providing workshops that were both extremely meticulous and structured and workshops that were more um, spontaneous and intuitive. And after doing both of these styles of workshops, I saw that they were both just as valuable as each other. And to me, this taught me the lesson that to simply be alive and to to have interests and to have, have acquired any kind of knowledge and life experience means that you have a lot of useful stuff to share you've just got to get out of your own way to share it you know there's we all have this wealth of amazing information within us that can help other people um but we get in our own way and go well it must be perfect it must be meticulously presented and yeah, I, one, of, one of the things I want to encourage everyone to do now is to just try to get past that limiting belief that you need to prepare for everything. You know, great. Yeah, preparation is, is, a, is a wonderful thing. You know, for, for certain things, definitely prepare. But at the same time, learn to trust yourself more. You know, do you have the belief that you could talk for two hours to a, to a group of people and they'd be interested and captivated? Because I promise you they could. And they would be if you just got out of your own way. 
if you stop telling yourself the story that you needed to be perfect or you needed to do things a certain way, you could actually just show up. And if you spoke passionately um, and with trust, you could totally give amazing advice and help people through through all sorts of difficulties um, without any kind of preparation. And it's kind of obvious, right? Like we have like dozens and dozens and dozens of, of books and movies and life experiences and articles that we've acquired throughout our throughout our life why wouldn't we be able to talk for two hours in a way that's highly valuable it's, it's obvious right um so yeah and i think that's really powerful as a creator to acknowledge as well that you what it whatever you have to share is valuable simply because it's coming from you um and just you know keep keep reinforcing that idea until it clicks yeah that's so cultivating the ability to find those grooves of spontaneous expression um, that that come from a, a sense of trust in yourself and kind of leaning in uh, are so powerful and you know with these kinds of conversations I feel like we've covered some really interesting ground and like uh, there's a lot of interesting points that have been highlighted none of these points were top of mind or some of maybe a couple of them were like, oh yeah, that'd be interesting. But a large majority of the material that we're discuss we're discussing, I didn't have in my in my head like this is what we got to say before we when we're having this conversation. So it's just the trusting of what gets drawn out of you uh, inside of you know the living moment, because that like that's where the the stuff that's most ripe can really start to push through the surface rather than trying to engineer and force things being like receptive uh, to these, these sort of intuitive impulses of what wants to be shared uh, can be really, really powerful. Um, and if people could trust them, themselves more, like you're saying, and not need to feel like they have, need to have everything so prepared and refined. I think part of that comes from perfectionism, imposter syndrome, all of these kinds of stuff. But when you, when you, begin to surround yourself with people who don't care about any of that stuff. Um, a lot of that can, a lot of that can shift. So we're coming up on 90 minutes for, for the session here. And maybe there's some, some additional things to, to touch on and, and, um, explore, but I wanted to at least make sure that people who, uh, are interested in the ascent, people who want to learn more, um, and have some, some sense of what they're getting into. If anything here has piqued your interest and you're wanting to leave the Shire, so to speak, and break out of patterns of, of stuckness, break out of the feelings of, um, you know, boredom and, and jadedness and really come alive in the pursuit of the, the things you want to create in the world um, and, and the expression of your gifts along with building relationships with really amazing people. You can check out the Ascent, um, you know, some more of the details and an application form at highexistence.com slash Ascent hyphen apply. And we'll have this link in the show notes and we'll have it in the, um, on the blog post. So if you're on High Existence, you can, you'll be able to dig up this link, but um, there you'll be able to read a bit more about it. And you'll also um, we have the chance to apply. The reason we have the application is we're really trying to curate a group of people. We want to bring people who are going to share a similar ethos and, and really want to dive in together. So um, it's not just open to everyone because it's not for everyone. It's for, for a certain type of person. So if you've found any resonance in this conversation and you think you might be one of those those people, I encourage you to apply because some, some profound transformation awaits if you if you commit yourself to the process. I don't say this lightly, but the the value is <laughs> it's so over delivered, um, and I and I don't just say that because it's it's a program that I'm part of. But we brought in people that that are just amazing, amazing facilitators um, that actually we choose to get coached by ourselves. You know, like I, I definitely would personally be coached by the facilitators that we've brought on to the ascent, and I have been in the past. And so, yeah, the people that, that we learn from, we're bringing in so you can get access to them too. 
Um, so yeah, there's just there's so much value to be gained from from this experience. Yeah, I don't have much to comment. There's a there's like a warmness in my heart right now of just like, yo, you can do this. Whatever the heck kind of world you envision inside of you, you can bring it to life. And yeah, part of part of any good adventure is meeting the group that like embarks on it together. And there are a lot of ways you can find it. And one of the ways is right here, right? There's a lot of support, a lot of love, a lot of care that goes into this. And it's been really beautiful watching people um, from the first round just, you know, go through this, right? The process might be straightforward. It's not always easy. It can be really challenging and really confronting, but there's a beauty. There's a warrior spirit to those who show up and really deconstruct themselves, build themselves back up to be the person who can deliver all of this and, and give these gifts to the world. And yeah, I think if this sparks anything, if you feel it, like if you feel that call inside of you, it's there. Like we're here, we're waiting, we're ready. Like, let's go do this. Absolutely. Yeah, unleash your song into the world. If you feel those, if you're hearing those notes, you know, make it make it happen. Whether it's our program or your own process that you commit to, what we want, what we're here for is to see people, you know, express their gifts, build beautiful relationships, and take small steps to making this world uh, a better place, you know? And we all have a, a part to play in that. Um, we can't tell you what that is for you, um, but we can we can help you get there when you start really exploring that question and start trying to try on answers. So really appreciate uh, this discussion with both of you guys, as always. Very, uh, very enjoyable to meld minds and hearts and uh, just see what surfaces over the course of 90 minutes. Hopefully, Dear listener, you uh, got some value out of this and you're, you're taking something away um, that will be useful that you can implement in your life. And yeah, we've got more great stuff coming down down the pipeline this year. Uh, so stay tuned. Make sure that you're, you're on our newsletter. You're receiving down the rabbit hole. It's where you'll receive a lot of updates. But also tune in to highexistence.com. And um, yeah, there's, that's, I mean... I can't understate how an immense a resource high existence is. It's been around for 10 years and there's so many articles. There's so, so much great stuff on there. You probably find a lot of answers uh, to the questions you might have. It doesn't have everything, of course, but uh, there's a lot of great stuff. So, yeah, with that said, uh, hope you have a great day wherever you are. I hope you're finding some something to be grateful for and we love you. Hey everybody, thanks so much for seeing this through to the end. As I mentioned at the beginning, applications for the second round of The Ascent are already open. Just follow the link in the description and let's start seriously playing the game of lifestyle design and aligned income together. If you know anyone who might be ready to answer the call to adventure and embark on this epic quest with us, send this over to them. And with that, thank you, I love you, and I will see you again soon for our next episode together.